Hey guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. We're going to keep going on the steelhead subject and talk about another great technique, and this is drift fishing. So a lot of the old school way for catching steelhead was to pick up a drift rod, throw a little bit of weight on, a corky, some bait, or just yarn, and go catch your fish. Simple, easy technique that a lot of people were very successful and caught their first steelhead on. So this is something that in some ways because of the popularity of bobber dogging, float fishing, and everything else, not too many do it anymore. And frankly in some cases it can be where you get more bites because fish are sitting in that portion of the water column. So in some ways to be able to know it helps you potentially get more fish. So we're going to cover a little bit on drift fishing gear and getting set up here for steelhead. So our basics are, I would pretty much go the same similar setup that I was using for my spoon fishing rig. My same 8 to 12, 10 to 20 rod with a low profile bait casting reel, spool up with 10 to 12 pound test line. Um, this is mono. And then you want some kind of sinker system rig. Now there's two different ways you can set this up. Personally, I like going the route of a sliding weight setup because this allows for a fish to grab your bait and not initially feel the lead so when that fish runs picks up the bait and starts to move that fish is completely on the line itself and that weight will come into any hindrance in particular as well if you're netting a fish that lead gets caught that fish has the ability to keep running and swimming away and not having the lead be a reason for losing a fish. So that's a sliding weight setup. There's a fixed setup as well, which means a three-way swivel, just like so, with a snap swivel on the bottom that allows you to clip on your weight. You tie one leader to your main line, one to your leader rig, and you're fishing just like that. This gives you a lot more direct feel to what that weight's doing. But like I said, that sliding setup really allows for you to feel a lot more on your fish with less pressure of that weight becoming in the way. You'll see a lot of guys who do side drifting on the boat have the sliding rigs because of the same reason. That fish feels the bait first before it, that weight comes into play. But when you come into drift fishing, there are so many different ways you can fish it, guys. Everybody out there has their own preferred weight to use, from slinkies made out of paracord and BB shot, to stick lead, like so, pencil lead, like I have here, Dave's Tangle Free Weights. I mean, guys, it's all, it's all preference to what you want to do. I like the Dave's Tangle Free and in a lot of my situations I'll even have pencil lead as a backup slinkies work really well and the onslaught that's come along with these uh, bobber dogger weights does well too so it's all preference but you guys first gotta pick up your rod and then choose how you want to rig it for a slip rig I'll show you guys here so I'm just have a size 12 barrel swivel that's got a snap on it I clip on my lead, but you thread that through the swivel eye, then you take a small 4 to 5 millimeter bead, and then you tie on another swivel there. What that ends up giving you is your main line runs through that so that way it can slide to here. Then you can go ahead and pick out what you're going to use for your drift rig itself. Now there's a couple ways that you can store these. I'd recommend a leader feeder just because it takes up so little space in your bag and you can open this sucker up have access to all of your drift fishing rigs ready to go you want to choose one you just pick one out slowly pull up and you got your rig then all you gotta do this one happens to be one of the Yakima bait Corky Drifter, so I would use that in conjunction with maybe a little bit of yarn or even perhaps throw on some bait with that. But I'm tying my leaders about three to three and a half feet 
and that's about the max that I'm running because these fish are going to hug close to the bottom the longer the leader you have the more chances you're working on your dental work on these fish as opposed to actually legitimately getting them to bite so I like to keep them short I like to be able to really utilize the technique to allow these fish to bite it instead of just trying to see how many fish we can bring in the side because drift fishing if used wrong cannot uh, be the most ethical way to fish so I really try and stick to that three and a half to th or sorry three to three and a half foot of leader length and by the time you're all said and done you have your weight tied on just like so down to your rig and you're ready to fish now drift fishing a lot like fishing hardware with spoons you cast slightly upstream letting that thing sink in the water and you'll feel it tick the bottom and a tip that I learned a few years ago from a buddy of mine who's really really good at drift fishing he walks into a hole doesn't tie on a leader yet but casts his weight set up and feels the bottom. If you're getting that bounce of the lead taking the bottom every three or four feet, that's the perfect way to do it. Instead of just dragging the bottom the whole way, you have a little bit too much. So I learned that, and as I went through my experience of casting out, doing the same thing, you learn that's the right rig for that depth, and then you tie on your leader and start fishing. You'll be more successful right out of the gate because you're going to be able to get those fish in a way that the presentation's most natural. Drift fishing is a way to present naturally baits on the bottom to these fish right in front of their face. So it can be bait, it could be pink worms, you guys could just fish beads, a lot of different things work really well for drift fishing. So keep that in mind, it's another versatile technique to have in your arsenal and I really hope this guy helps you out. We'll have to get on the water here and show you guys what I'm talking about as far as how to do the technique. But as far as setting up and gearing up for it, you're all set here. So thanks a lot for watching. Rick Denham, Holy Moly Outdoors. Sign off, take care, and fish on.